I have no idea why my video is black and white. I, I gotta figure out how to fix that, but... <sighs> Welcome back to Underrated Movies. I am your guy, I am your man, Mr. Alton Henry. Today I have the pleasure of re-watching and I believe it's underrated. I mean, it got, it's got it's got praise over the Oscars of last year, and I saw it in theaters. I'm going to be talking about, um, and I will keep it on my watch list, but I could always just put, pull it up. Hiyo Sake's Himiguchi's Drive My Car, starring, uh, I believe this guy is mostly in, uh, in television. Hiri Toshi Nashin Chumima Toko Mimura Masaki Okada. And it's based off a short story, but the story centers around after the death of his wife, um, Yusuke is assigned to direct a. Um, Akum Vanya adaptation at a um, at a play. Oh well, a, a play. He's he he to direct a play. Uh, at some sort of festival in Hiroshima, he is accompanied by a driver who was uh, assigned to him to drive him around uh, Hiroshima, and then the two kind of connect, realizing that they have some similarities. And what I love about this film, I'm gonna just tell you, tell you straight up and tell you this. This is probably as a drama film, like drama, 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 with no action, just nothing, just straight out, just human, regular, life to life, daily life drama. This is one of the best I've ever seen. Probably next to The Deer Hunter, this is one of the best I've ever seen. And the reason for that is for a few reasons. One, when watching a film, drama or anything, I never really had the pleasure to really like actually imagine like what if this actually happened to me and what I would and what would I do to handle it. Um two I like that the film really takes its time to get its story across. And three, it it feels pretty much grounded. And the first issue, or I won't say issue, the first point that it makes me really visualize or really get into the story is that the characters, the, char the characters feel real. The characters feel like they're not selling it with dramatic purposes. They're not really overselling it with the acting. It's like, it just comes out natural. And also for those who don't know, the, the first hour, or at least literally the first 43 minutes, it's a prologue. Like it's a big setup of, of what's the key thing of of the movie and um, I tell you what when I watched this film and but the more I kind of got into it you kind of understand the reason why certain characters did or have done the things that they that they've done which transpire to the rest of what's happened and what the characters have to deal with in this film. Where, um, and I don't know if I want to spoil, but it does tackle certain issues that's currently being more publicized nowadays with the internet and basically how you surface it up. Where I'm going to kind of just vaguely say what kind of happens in the film because the trailer doesn't really sell you what, what, what happens. And that's a good thing. But what happens is that during a tragedy, and the tragedy was long overdue, um, the couple of Yusuke and I think the the, the, the actress uh, or the character is Koji, I believe. Um, they've lost a child, and the two didn't know how to cope with it. Um, the love was still there, but deep down, both of them were broken, and both of them kind of shut each other out. One of them tried to figure out a, a, another way to move on by having another child. The other one didn't want to. 
felt like it was just maybe too soon or whatever the reason. And I don't necessarily blame one over the other, but both of them are at fault for a failing relationship. Um, both didn't know how to deal with it, and I can't imagine what it's like to lose a child. I don't have kids. So it really kind of puts you any predicament of how to cope with trauma and how sometimes people deal with it in their own unusual way and some people not, might not be able to respond and they feel like they have to cope or handle it on their own way and um, what happens is that well the wife has infidelity and starts sleeping with other people and the husband knew about it, but he didn't want to let her go or didn't want to confront her about it. But it gets to the point that later in the film where, and it's disgusting, to be honest with you. Like, there's a whole red pill thing. <laughs> I, I got to be honest. If, if someone's doing that, man or woman, if they cheat, leave. Even, even if there's tragedy. I mean, I, I don't, I mean, I think regardless if there's tragedy, still, uh, one bells out or cheats, they, you know, they got to go. They got to leave. The husband knows about it, but he doesn't know how to handle it. So he's constantly convincing himself that if he confronted her about it, which he knows he didn't like her cheating, he would lose her. <clears throat> And there was a moment where I think she was going to try to find some sort of resolution behind it, but the movie, it doesn't, doesn't specify, but it was right before the wife says she wants to talk to him about certain things, she dies. Some sort of hemorrhage, like some clog, I think blood clogged in the brain and she couldn't get any oxygen. So after that, the movie chronicles him two years later, Yusuke of him dealing with it and questioning what the overall theme of what the film is centerizing is what is love what is the kind of love that one gives love languages and everyone's unique unique way of expressing it there's a lot of characters in this film that are somewhat suppressed mostly the two main characters or well three that are that are that that, that somehow are suppressing how they should um, feel, suppressing their emotions due to trauma, due to other people experiencing how they're sharing or how they're expressing their their love language or how they perceive love or how they choose to give it. It's the movie dives into what is that concept of romantic relationships and love. What is it? So the movie really kind of questions, or I wouldn't not necessarily questions, but it really analyzes what is the definition, what is love? And how do you go about it expressing it? Especially coming from um, part times. Cause there's this um, other character, um, the designated driver with her, uh, is it Masaki Okuta? I'm sorry. Um, the driver who was assigned to drive Yusuke around. I'm probably getting their names wrong, I'm so I apologize. Um, she's dealt with some traumatic experience relating to her mother that, you know, her mother was abusive and she's trying to figure out a good way of seen it from a different perspective saying well if she did this i wouldn't be able to learn how to drive a car because she taught me how to drive a car and other things in life even though i've done something bad in retaliation in a way um, i'm still thankful for what's what's um you know what, what the gift that she that she gave me which is something interesting about this film that and believe it or not, because it makes me really think after watching it a second time, that the people you meet, whether good or bad, you learn something from it. So there's a gift from every single person that you've encountered and you learn from it. 
good and bad. If it's bad, well, you learn not to associate with that person again, but you also learn something valuable behind it. You learn quite a few things by being around people who've gone through their own experiences in life and can teach you about certain things that could maybe benefit your own. And the movie really puts that out there. And there's a sequence in there, which was the first time it was kind of a difficult to watch because it's like you're hearing somebody conf confess to taking part in an in infidelity act. It's a, it's a car sequence and it's a long sequence. It's like, I think, 10 minutes. I think like seven to ten minutes were a um, little of a spoiler. Um, there's this character who gets cast in the play Uncle Vanya, is supposed to play Uncle Vanya. Um, and the director, husband, slash, well, Yusuke, finds out or recognizes, like, wait a minute, that is the guy that slept with my wife. So he doesn't really do anything about it. He doesn't want to create drama or anything. But there's a sequence in there where they do have quite a few discussions about um, about uh, about you know their relationship with um, with his wife. That he admits that yeah, what I did was crap, but why? fell in love with your wife and we kind of have some sort of brief connection and I'm sorry to, to admit to you but that's what happened and then there's a lot of symbolisms of what's being told into the film where it foreshadows what happens it for foreshadows certain things about the character that kind of adds backstory to those characters and it's very unique some of these characters are in some of these stories that that are being taught I could kind of tell that some of these characters are kind of damaged in the head and I'm not saying that as a bad thing but there's people out there that have experienced trauma and they see the role from a different way and how they interpret what um how to live their life and what their body language or love language what they perceive as that affection if that makes sense which was interesting um I've and it makes me really really love this film even more thinking about it and I'm kind of felt the shame that this past Oscars that the most memorable thing about that 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 well that event was the Will Smith slap to be honest with you this movie should have won best picture I mean one best foreign language thank God but I think it could have won best picture I have not seen CODA so I don't know um and I gotta be honest, when I was watching this movie, Yusuke, I got so pissed off with, the, with that character. I'm not saying he's an annoying character, he's not. He's a cool character, well, not cool in a, in a positive sense, but it's just the situation that he's in where it's tough to let go. And then the movie note also puts out like another fact that could you accept a person? And this movie really, like, really get you like the idea can you really accept somebody who they are and what they do their habits and everything for a relationship to succeed could you accept every freaking flaw that they have because that's something really you have to do <laughs> even if they're somewhat have scars can you accept that because if you don't you don't fully love that person. You don't, you know, there's some, you know, I think that's full found um, love. I think that the film is trying to point out that you have to fully accept everything, everything, even if they got, you know, a disability, you got to accept full fledged everything about them. Otherwise, things will, 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 will come to, you know, will fall apart. And I think that's what the film, to its core, was really pressing out. Uh, I gotta be honest, with that character, the uh, main character, Yusuke, and like I said, I, I don't know what, you know, I don't have kids. And people deal with trauma in their own way. Losing someone in their own way. But someone steps out the marriage and they, you know, 
cheap. They out, you know, they just gotta leave. And y'all just got the rest of just gotta end. <laughs> it has to end. At least for me, because the guy was so scared of losing his wife and didn't want to confront and addressing his needs out of it. But then he kind of felt from from what the film implies that he kind of shut her out a little bit, but they still get intimate, but he wasn't fully connecting with her due to that tragedy. And things kind of fell off. There could have been a way for them, for the both of them to um, find some sort of balance, some sort of way to um, put their relationship back on track. They chose to stick it out, but they still had a unhealthy way to handle their, 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 uh, they had a, they had a bad solution to what they've, um, uh, for what they tried to do with their relationship, they had, they had, there was a bad solution. Um, but this movie took its time to flesh out the story. It felt there was nothing forced, and you do feel the length of this film. This film is three hours long, and I saw this in theaters. I felt the length of it. I ain't gonna lie to you. You do. For those who aren't really tuned in or ain't or not used to a three hour drama really about life and this is this is different this is movie just about life there's really nothing too dramatic in it but if you're patient with it you could you you can you can get into it and I think you, you can but I think for a lot of people it might be a challenge and this is a Japanese film so you know if you're used to subtitles, please, you know, take the time. Try it out. Um, this is a film, a little bit of a challenge because, of you know, it is a three-hour drama about relationships. But I think it's one of the better ones to, um, to have ever been made so far. Um, I like the music is subtle. Everything is subtle. The cinematography in this was amazing. Like, it's... Like to me, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like it, it after seeing this film, I kind of want to write, and this is a Japanese genre, but I kind of wouldn't mind writing a film that deals with a slice of life kind of genre, or it's like a comedy drama. Maybe if I find the right story, but it's 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 a, it's a challenge. It's kind of interesting, and there was like every every story beat, everything about this film was interesting. And it didn't feel like there was any cliches or or anything. It felt like a natural piece of art. What you doing up here, boy? That I believe uh, you should really, really check out. Like it's it's amazing. It's an amazing film. Maybe a little bit hard to watch because of the first 40 minutes or at least the uh, at least a good 30 minutes of, of the intro because when you kind of find out what's going on, y'all probably going to get pissed. <laughs> <laughs> like I was, I was, but this movie was pretty amazing and uh, it should, and, and the praise that, that, that it got, uh, thank goodness, and it should get a lot more. Drive My Car, have you seen it? Comment below, let me know if you have. Now available on HBO Max. And let me know, what is your favorite underrated movie?